Now there are a variety of additional media players available in the TriCaster as well. This TriCaster has a stills player, a titles player, and a sounds player, and let's go ahead and take a look at all three of those. All three of those media players are located over here in the right hand bin and use the tabs to select them. We have stills, titles, and sounds. Again, on the control surface here, you also have access to stills, titles, and sounds. And you may notice that I'm pushing on stills and titles and sounds, but nothing is happening on the interface. There is a way to have the TriCaster follow the delegates as you press them and bring up those appropriate tabs as you want to use them. And again, that's by using this little gear right over here in the upper right hand corner of that modular tab area. And there is a area that says tabs follow all delegates. So now if I come here and I push on titles, title shows up. Push on still, still shows up. Push on sounds, sound shows up. So it's a great way to be able to instantly get where you want to go right from the control surface without having to grab the mouse and go to that particular tab to bring up the media player that you want to work with. So let's go ahead and start with the stills tab. Now, of course, we can work with a variety of still images and there is a stills uh, input or channel on our switcher. So we can go right there and now you can either click with the mouse on different still images to bring them up or again here in the media player area if stills is the selected media player from my transport controls you have the arrow to align on the left and the arrow to align on the right this is go to the previous still and this is go to the next still so this is a way for you to be able to get through the still images without picking up the mouse now again, we can work with some still images that have alpha channel or full page still images that don't. And there are a variety of presets. Now again, I can grab the mouse and come over here for the presets, or you do have previous and next preset buttons on the control surface. So I can go to the next preset. I can go to the next preset and have very quick access to a wide variety of still images. Now another way to use the stills player instead of directly accessing still images is to set up a slideshow. Now each one of these still images, you can set a duration on it. You can right click, go to set duration. You can set a duration for however long you want it to be. And then use the transport controls down here to play this back like a slideshow. Now, again, you want to have single turned off if you're going to be playing a slideshow because it will then play through everything. If single is turned on, it's just going to play one still. But this has its uses as well. Let's turn on autoplay just like in the DDR. Now. I'm going to be on a live camera and I'm going to have stills on preview. If I switch to stills, that still comes up. If I switch to any other input, stills automatically advances to the next image for me. We can switch back to stills, I've got the next image. Switch back to a different live video input, my next still image is loaded up. And again, just going back and forth between any other input and the stills bin, and it's advancing the still images for you as you work your way through it. Now, we also have the titles player. This works exactly the same way. You can set durations on titles. You can use the transport controls down here the same way. You can also, of course, configure the titles. We talked about that earlier in this video presentation. Now another thing that you can do by setting durations is you can do a graphic build by using the titles. So let's go down here to this preset where I've got one of these set up and I just want to show you what we've got here first. We started with one of the title templates and then we just added one line of text to each additional title template. So this is our graphic build, you know, what's on at 7, what's on at 8, what's on at 9, what's on at 10. Now, to set the durations for these, instead of going in and right clicking and saying set duration one at a time, you can set the durations globally. Simply left click and drag out a box and select all of the elements of that graphic build and then click on right click on one of them and select set duration. And you're now setting the duration for the entire group. And I'm going to set the duration to 1.5 seconds for each one of those. Now again, I want single turned off and I have autoplay turned off and we're going to go ahead and we'll start out on video and we'll switch over to our graphic build and then just fire it off and it's going to start playing back 
and it's going to show us what we need. And then when it gets to the end, it just freezes, and then we can manually transition back to the show. Now, another media player available in the TriCaster is the Sounds Player. And it's located right next to the Titles Player here under the Sound tab. And it allows you to load up sound files. Uh, WAV files, MP3s, a variety of different sound file formats are supported. And this would allow you to play back, say, a music bed underneath your live production or a sound effect or maybe even a voiceover over a video clip that's not on the video clip. And that can be done from the sounds player instead of having to use one of the video capable DDRs in order to do that. You can use both of the DDRs for video tasks and still have a player to play out any sounds that you might want to play during that live production. And again, it has all the same controls. It does not have autoplay because there is no way to switch to the sounds player, but it does have single and it does have the transport controls down here. And it does also allow you to mark in and out points so you can customize that audio sound file once you get it into the sounds player before actually firing it off and using it in the live.